Hi, welcome back to educator.com. This is the lesson on materials management. All right, so the importance of resources in terms of the materials we get from the earth and what we do with them. When it comes to materials or resources, there's renewables and non-renewables. And so this can be a very big topic in terms of like thinking about air and soil and water. And it can be more specific in terms of specific kinds of minerals. Uh, but as we discussed in previous lessons, Renewables would include things like um, some sources of, uh, of groundwater and surface water, um, plants and animals, they are renewable. You know, plants can make more plants, animals can make more animals. Uh, and, and that's like biofuel, for instance, like using wood that is renewable. Air is a, is a renewable resource. The air is not going away, even though over time we are polluting the air. Um, Non-renewables, a lot of the things previously mentioned in other lessons in this course, oil, right, uh, coal, um, soil, in a sense, is a non-renewable because it can get to the point where it's damaged permanently and you can't get it back to uh, the soil that um, actually could grow plant life as before. So um, it really depends on whether or not uh, you can continually get that resource or if it's non-renewable, it's finite. It's going to go away if you use too much of it. So the goal is sustainable retrieval and use of renewable resources and non-renewables. And some ways to do that are, number one, eliminate subsidies for extracting virgin materials. So subsidies are um, methods the government uses to make things more affordable for companies. So extracting virgin materials means getting the original stuff out of the earth and doing certain manufacturing processes with that stuff, doing certain chemical reactions to get the products you need uh, to sell to market. So uh, the opposite of using virgin materials would be um, using scrap metal. So there's actually a lot of facilities around the United States and elsewhere on earth, instead of making steel from straight up iron ore that they got right out of the earth and doing things with that, you can actually get used steel from all these, you know, demolished buildings, demolished structures, and you can melt that down and remake the steel that you want to sell back to people. So that's great. You're, you're using non-virgin materials, used materials. Um, so if you eliminate subsidies for extracting virgin materials, you do make it cost more to do that, but you encourage companies at the same time to reuse what's already out there. Establish green building incentives. So there's ways to make a green building in terms of how you build it and how you um, make the building work uh, you know, in terms of a place for people to work or to live after the building process. Uh, so a green building would have, um, hopefully, close to no carbon footprint, uh, meaning um, in terms of uh, raw materials used, in terms of pollution that was made uh, to create these pieces for the building, uh, hopefully that would be much, much, much lower. And then there are green buildings that exist today in terms of um, the way that um, the building uses their water, the way that they actually cool the building has very low carbon footprint. They're actually not using a lot of fossil fuels to do that. So if you make incentives for building these green buildings, more of them will pop up and it will benefit everybody in the long run. Provide financial incentives for sound or reliable, good industrial practices and punishments for irresponsible ones. That already happens a bit in the United States. It seems like there's um, more and more public support. Of course, people who work in those industries uh, typically don't like government regulations because sometimes it costs more to do certain things, but uh, the government is doing that for the good of everyone, theoretically. Um, so sound industrial practices in terms of not polluting too much, uh, not overusing materials that are in, uh, in, in high demand and short supply. Um, uh, punishments for irresponsible ones, yeah. Um, you know, usually those are financial punishments. Uh, they don't get the tax break. And then finally, provide more incentives for people and companies to develop programs targeted at reusing waste for other use and recycling. That makes sense. Um, and uh, if you actually make it a situation where um, for people to recycle from their own home, for that not to cost anything, but to charge people based on the total amount of refuse, solid waste, trash that they dispose of, you would create an incentive to recycle, big time. Because people don't want to pay money, they want to do it for free. 
So if you set up a program around a city where no charge for recycling your plastics and your paper and, you know, disposing of that in particular containers on, on the street. Um, but yeah, then if you then charge them for what they're not recycling, you create an incentive.